Hi everyone, welcome to the latest um, developer blog for Democracy 4. I'm Cliff Harris or Klipsky. I am uh, the designer and one of the programmers um, on the game and uh, we do these videos every week more or less and I'm just going to talk about a few things that have gone in in the last week including something that I forgot to mention um, in, in the last video. Um, so I've got, a, I've actually got an organized list this time which is good. Um, so one of the things, it's a minor thing, is if you go into focus groups, um, I've added these little arrows here that are from another part of the user interface um, that we're using all over the place now. And hopefully this makes it clear how this works. This isn't like inputs and outputs here because we're talking about one individual here, um, Corey Patterson, um, and how he comes to have 71.32% approval of your government. So all of these are inputs, they're all inputs. They're only on different sides to balance things out and make things uh, look nice visually. Um, so you've got the inputs here from him being in different voter groups. Uh, we've got five of them. He's pretty much a socialist, very liberal, pretty much an environmentalist, um, very slightly would be considered middle income and he's a state employee everyone is in everyone um, and these are the opinions of those groups so they get like multiplied by the extent to which he identifies with each group and these all have um, inputs into how he feels so uh, with four of those groups they're kind of uh, positive one of them the middle income voters are negative very upset um, but the good is out, outweighing the bad there. Everyone is very slightly upset, but, but, but not a lot. And then you have um, the perceptions of, of voters generally about um, your government and specifically you, whether or not you are a strong leader or compassionate. Um, what's the other one? Strong leader, compassionate. There's a third, I can't remember. Um, and at the moment, um, this is actually a bug that should be zero. Um, it's just being displayed wrong. Um, and um, then you have the views of uh, ministers as well. Anyway, so um, I just added these arrows in here. Um, and you can click on all of these different voters and see how this works um, for everyone else. And also you've got like, like uh, the amount of funds that have been raised um, by your political party. And you can create completely new groups. There's a lot of voters in the game and you can look at every single one of them. Um, so that's a new thing, it's just, just to make that screen a bit more obvious. Um, something else that I changed, if we go into this screen, um, I, I have to go to the next turn to do it actually. Oh, should I do that? Um, before we do that, I'll point out some other things. Um, I improved how the security screen looks. This is where you look at like terrorism and threats. Just that it, it's a bit more lively and animated. So it kind of does that. Um, I'll do that again so you can marvel at it. Woo. Um, it's just a load of visual fluff in the background, like these big circular things and these bars that go up and down here and these meaningless things and all of this um, stuff in the background. Actually, some of that is, oh no, it is, it's all animating. Um, anyway, um, you can't see a lot here because uh, this is the very first turn, but I'll come back to that in a minute. So uh, we've done that, that's just, you know, visual nonsense. Um, something else that we've done is if you go into pretty much anything, so uh, let's go into CO2, um, all of these columns that have effects, no matter where they are in the game, so they could be here or they could be in a situation. Um, I think I've even done it with, with voter groups. Yes, I have. Um, so they're all sortable by name and strength so uh and up and down so um we can sort those by name like this um i hate that sound we're changing that sound um or you can you can sort it by strength in e each direction um, and i think that's quite handy when you've got like an enormous list so if you look at gdp there are a lot of influences on gdp um so if you want to see um you know the positive ones or the negative ones um more obviously you can now sort them like this uh, and like I say, that happens everywhere in the game. Um, it wasn't that um, tricky to do that, and it really does make a difference when you get used to like playing the game a lot. So I've got two, I've got three other things that I want to show you. I'm going to go to the next turn. Hope it doesn't crash. Hey, it doesn't. Um, this is a new thing. Situation imminent. 
So basically, this is the same um, image, although it will change eventually uh, as one of the ministers. But it, this is the one who set aside to like be your advisor. Um, just that image. And this is a, a new feature in the game. So this is telling you that there is a um, situation that has not triggered yet, but may trigger soon. So it's, it's, it's kind of a warning um, that there's a situation that, that could trigger and, and you should do something about it. In this case, it's hospital overcrowding. So if I click on that, I get this, uh, this window here. And this is just some more information about it. So hospital overcrowding hasn't happened yet. And you can see here on this chart that red line is where it will start triggering and it will have all sorts of negative Im impacts um, which is up, up to you to kind of guess what they would be um, and this is the progress towards it this is right at the start of the game so these numbers look a bit weird and again this is sortable excellent um, that's the benefit of a sensible UI design um, so these are the things that are currently causing that so healthcare demand is high um, the population has a very minor, we've probably got some immigration that's putting pressure on, on um, the hospitals. Um, but private healthcare is taking some of the demand off. We have a state health service um, with a certain amount of funding. So we can click on that. So we could adjust this, we could put this up. Um, let's spend a little bit more on healthcare, um, hoping to like, like head off that problem. Um, this is just an event that's happened. So, um, so this is a warning about that particular situation. I won't get that warning again for another four turns, no matter what happens, but I may be warned about others if they're close to a certain um, threshold. So in the next turn, and th this is what this screen looks like then. Um, so uh, th these are all the different groups that are threatening us. These ones here without the gun, these are just pressure groups. The ones with the gun, uh, they're terrorists and they will eventually um, get members from the more extreme um, membership of these groups if these groups grow and the, the kind of feed-in groups get angry. Um, so I've got one other thing that I was going to show you uh, but really I have to hack something to do that so I'm going to stop the video I'm going to well I don't have to hack it I could play through an entire game but that would take a while and I'd have to win the election uh, so I might hack it so that I win the election and it happens straight away so that I don't have to spend all day doing that um, I'll be back okay and I'm back I'm just going to show you uh, these two other things uh, one of them is if I go here and I've already gone like one turn into the game or more I've got the I've got this uh, little uh, user interface change here um, the experience of ministers goes up um, as they spend time in the job so uh, they get better at what they're doing um, this is quite a hard thing to to convey properly the, the relationship between this stuff here so I've added like tool tips to all of these items that explain them so basically people have a certain level of experience as ministers um, and the longer you keep them around the better they will get at being a minister and they also have um, a ability to do certain jobs better than others so the desired jobs here shows that this person should be in one of these three jobs and they are they're in foreign policy so that's good so their effectiveness is basically um, an equation based upon whether or not they're in a desired job and um, how experienced they are over time that experience will go up now loyalty may go up it may go down um, campaigning is, is kind of like a fixed attribute um, so effectiveness may go up and down depending what job they're in but I needed a way to convey that experience goes up over time when um, you're doing a job so I added these little arrows here to show that it goes up and this white bit at the end here that's how much extra experience we've got so we this person was like born with this much experience through like other jobs or something it's different for everyone and they've gained a little bit through being in the job and that little gain bit that's in white will continue to be there I'm not 100% happy with this as a bit of user interface but I'm happier with it than uh, democracy 3 and like, like the, the original version which that value just went up and we never even told anyone anyway that's one thing so I'm now going to show you another thing I've hacked the game so that I will win the next election and everyone will vote for me um, hopefully it'll be okay um, yeah I don't care about any of those for now um, so 
the animation in this is slow for a reason that I I will I will fix at some point. Um, we, we've only got two parties at the moment, uh, but we do support three parties. Um, yeah, this animation I will fix that. So I won because I. <laughs> Um, so the next new thing that is in is this. Uh, so because I won the election and everyone is sort of grateful for me winning, um, I can do a cabinet reshuffle uh, for free at the moment. So if I hit this button, I, I reshuffle the cabinet, uh, meaning I kick everyone out of their job and I can rehire them for the same job or different jobs or hire different people and it won't cost me any political capital. I, I get to do this on the day after I win an election. You can decide not to bother. If I do click on it, there, I fired everyone and I can go through and start, um, you know, hiring whoever I want. Um, yeah. Is that a bug there that it goes back to that screen? Oh, it is. I need to fix that. Anyway, so those are the things that are new um, that, are in, that, that are in the game uh, in, in the last week. Um, I hope you like these things. Um, so uh, in the next week we're going to be working on stuff to make sure that uh, the, the balance of the game is right. I may skip a video if all we've done is change a load of numbers and do a lot of playthroughs of the UK. Uh, there is a lot of extra policy stuff that I'm going to be putting in but I won't um, I won't comment on that until it's actually in the game. Uh, this is Democracy 4 by Project Tech Games. It's still in development, um, but we're, um, we're definitely getting there. We just fixed a load of performance issues and um, it's all seeming uh, to work a lot nicer and a lot more smoothly now. Um, please like and subscribe and all, all that sort of thing. Uh, the website is at positivetech.co.uk. You can follow me on Twitter or whatever. Um, if you go to our website, we have a newsletter, sign up and stuff like that. Uh, thank you for watching. And I may or may not do a video next week. We may skip one, depending. Um, but we're still working on the game on that time. Thank you.